What is good Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video and in this one I want to break down what's going on with Tesla, SPY, NVIDIA, the QQQ and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down what the news is saying about Tesla that's very important for the short term and why tomorrow is going to be a very important day for the entire market including Tesla as we have some big news coming out such as the FOMC minutes which will affect the way the market views the Fed not to mention NVIDIA's earnings after the market closes. But before I break anything down about why on earth this news is going to be so big, what the news is saying about Tesla and what's going on with the charts, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Tesla community as a whole. So anyways, let's break down what's going on with the market. Let's talk about why tomorrow is going to be a big day and etc. First off, when it comes to the market right now, we're becoming more and more greedy as time goes on. We're starting to see buyers stepping in. We're starting to see sentiment shifting. Market momentum is extremely greedy right now, which is a big red flag for this market rally, in my opinion. Not to mention the fact that, you know, the puts and call option positioning is extremely greedy. We're seeing loads of puts being closed in the markets, and we're seeing calls being bought up more than puts relative to before. And we're once again seeing lots of FOMO. We're starting to see FOMO coming in. We're starting to see the buyers stepping in. Retail is getting very excited. And this is when you should start to become very careful. Market volatility is quite neutral, very much neutral because we're seeing the VIX below the 50-day moving average. And on top of this, other indicators are still very, very greedy. I want to break down more information about this later on. Just know the market is quite greedy and we're not at extremes yet on the fear and greed index. We're getting closer and closer to those levels as we have some big events coming out. Why is tomorrow so big? There are two reasons why. Number one, tomorrow at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the FOMC minutes coming out. This is going to be the most important piece of data during the market open hours. What is so good about the FOMC minutes, you may ask? The answer is this is going to be a report, a summary of the FOMC meeting. We're going to find out more insights about what the Fed is likely going to do. What are the views of these different Fed officials and how they view the current monetary policy and inflationary state that we're in? We're also going to find out more about what Jerome Powell could be thinking, uh, what the Fed's target rate may be, and what the Fed may be doing when it comes to like cutting rates going into next year, when they may plan on doing that, right? So lots of insightful information about the economy and monetary policy. This is going to likely have an effect on the markets, and sometimes this causes some high volatility. So we'll be watching for some kind of move. If the market's pumping approaching this event, we'll see if the market pumps more if it gets a rug pull. So you want to be very careful once this data comes out at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In addition to all of this, I just wanted to mention that for Tuesday, which is tomorrow after the market closes, after all the data comes out, we have NVIDIA's earnings. NVIDIA is going to be making a big move most likely. The market's expecting NVIDIA to move 40 points after this earnings comes out. And, you know, there's so many eyes and so much money that flows in and out of the stock that it likely is going to make a big move during the after hours as institutions have this in their minds. So that being said, uh, I would say that for NVIDIA, it's very, you know, hard to predict what's going to happen to it. It is possible it goes in either direction, but there's a good chance it's going to make a very big move, which could shake SPY and all these different stocks. As far as it goes, though, wait till after close to see the real move, and that's going to have a big effect on SPY, on Tesla, and the entire stock market, especially on the tech sector. Now, as far as what's going on with Tesla, there was some news that came out about the Cybertruck. I talked about this early on. Uh, some investors are kind of turning on the Cybertruck and saying that, uh, you know, they should cancel it. It's going to be better for Tesla. I personally disagree. I do agree with the points that for the short term, the Cybertruck is not going to be the most bullish Thing for Tesla's fundamentals. I mean, it's going to be you know a big liability. It's going to be very difficult for them to uh, you know improve the production lines for it. But for the long term, I'm still a big bull for the Cybertruck, and I think that they're eventually going to find their way. They're eventually going to get make a lot of revenue off of it and become a lot more profitable. And I still hold it the same view. However, there are other headlines coming out where many Tesla's investors are just turning to the Tesla board to basically review. Elon Musk's previous actions, and many of them do not have very good views of what he has done. So the truth is, this is not good news for any company. Elon Musk, and I've already said this before, I believe that the man should control his tongue. That's my honest view, but I simultaneously respect his rights to freedom of speech. But as a CEO, you just have to be very careful. I also want to add that I, you know, I just condemn any form of hate against anyone. 
Uh, not, I'm not going to make any more claims about Musk or anything like that, but I just want to go over these articles, just a couple of details about them in a very unbiased manner. So there are you know, investors out there. There are different board members who are saying that Elon Musk is acting very childish. Uh, he's, he has this like cult personality. He's going on about things that he shouldn't do. And there are other uh, investors out there, other shareholders who are saying that Elon Musk could be put on a suspension because of this. Uh, he, he should basically just take 30 to 60 days off from work and he, he'd first he'd be forced to go through some kind of therapy to learn more about empathy. I, I've, I've read a lot of things about that from different shareholders. Uh, it's not good news whatsoever for you know any company to hear something like this about their CEO. Other people are arguing that Elon Musk is just like losing his view of reality. Uh, he's too narcissistic, narcissistic and things like this. I mean, I'm just seeing a lot of things about this, guys. I mean, I, I really don't want to talk too much about drama, but this is just the reality of the situation. And as an investor in Tesla, this news does affect Tesla. So if you look at the market, the market was running today. We saw a big move on SPY. The QQQ was the highest we've seen since the 2022 season. And Tesla was lagging behind. Tesla didn't really get much of a pump. It was very sideways, very flat. In the beginning, it was very red, coming down, looking relatively weak. And Tesla is showing some signs of weakness. It's not like pushing up as hard as it could have. Because of all this negative news associated with Elon Musk and the media just saying all these things. So it's the truth. I know it's not what anyone wants to hear, but that is still affecting Tesla. Now, to add on to all of this, I just want to mention that Tesla's volume was not the strongest, only about 116 million. So it's losing some volume, not getting as much exposure as before. The shorting must still be high for it. The short volume might be dropping a bit, but the overall shorting and the short interest is still relatively high. Uh, but to add on to this, the price price ratio is flat. Tesla is performing very a little bit weaker than before, but it's not like you know tanking. It's not like extremely weak at the same time. It's just very flat and just not like super strong. So on to this, Tuesdays tend to be green only about fifty one percent of the time. But none of this data matters as much because what's going to matter more is going to be the data. So once again, at two p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the FOMC minutes tomorrow. And what do I see for Tesla stock? Well, the answer is. We have this support trend line that's been once again respecting uh, these different levels for Tesla. And Tesla, in turn, has been trying to just fluctuate around this. It kind of popped off of this, came down, broke a little bit below it, but got bought right back up at the very end to get above the trend line. So I would say that because we have a potential inverse head and shoulders like structure on Tesla, we have this like left shoulder here, the head and the right shoulder forming, we could see Tesla attempt to uptrend just a little bit more approaching the FOMC minutes. Then we're going to be watching this resistance around this uh, 236 area, not to mention 237.4. Then we have 238 and then 240. We might slowly uptrend a little bit as we approach the minutes, but then we're going to see two big moves. When the FOMC minutes come out, if they launch the market higher, we could see Tesla make an attempt to get up to 240. This is assuming that all other factors stay the same. There's no like external bad piece of news. But if the minutes are decent, we might see Tesla get an extra boost and push a little higher back into the 240s, very low 240s. If the minutes cause some kind of rug pull, if Tesla's like at 238 or so tomorrow, because I think it might uptrend just a little bit, we might see Tesla come back down towards 235 or even these lower levels if the minutes cause a rug pull. And then the real move, the big move is going to happen during the after hours going into Wednesday when we after we get the reaction from NVIDIA's earnings. So we will see if Tesla continues to launch up back up towards these imbalances or if Tesla gets the rug pulled by the time we get to later into the day on Tuesday slash Wednesday. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see. But for now, it looks like Tesla's trying to uptrend. We made a higher low right over here. We might see this thing make an attempt to slowly, slowly push a little higher and get close to the 238 area. And then we're going to be watching to see how it reacts to all this very important data. Another stock that's super important right now is NVIDIA breaking all-time highs again, continuing to rocket to the moon. NVIDIA is looking very, very decent as of right now, approaching earnings. But things could change depending on how earnings go. So I just want to call out when it comes to uh, NVIDIA right about here that you, you want to be very careful when looking at it because I do see one thing that concerns me and that is the fact that NVIDIA is, although it's pumping, it's forming a, quad, a triple or a quadruple bearish divergence. I think it's actually a triple bearish divergence. So this is actually concerning to me because even though it's pumping and pumping and pumping, 
this tells us that there's a risk associated with this pump. Now, it doesn't mean NVIDIA has to get a rug pull after earnings. No, it does not guarantee that because earnings matter more than technicals. But it's just telling us that it's risky. It, you know, NVIDIA is in a risky place right now, and you just want to be very careful in looking at how it's pumping. Also, when stocks pump really hard approaching earnings, it's not always the best of signs. So you want to be very careful. If NVIDIA makes the full measured move, which means that we make a 40-point move, if we get a very strong earnings and NVIDIA beats and guidance is good, NVIDIA could be getting close to 550, okay, after earnings comes out. If earnings are not the best or if something happens with guidance, NVIDIA could get a rug pull back down into the 400s. You want to be very careful. I just want to note that NVIDIA looks bullish right now. So approaching its earnings, it could push higher. I would not rule out the possibility of us getting to like 510, even like 512 on the stock. So just be careful, even though it is pumping like this, I, I would just be very careful in trying to play this. I know a lot of people like to gamble on NVIDIA. Uh, you could still do that if you want, guys. You know, you could make a ton of money if you want, but just be very careful. That's just what I want to I want to warn you about. Uh, you know, we have this 510, 508 resistance, 510, 512, and like 515 coming up. For support, make sure you watch 504. If we lose that, watch 500. If we lose 502, then 500, then 498 and 495. It may hold up approaching its earnings, but we'll see what happens after that. As far as SPY goes, I was talking to everyone about the range SPY was in between 448 and 452. And as you can see, SPY got the breakout. We actually broke above our resistance. We broke 452, and this thing started to rocket towards 455. Now, I want to note that on the daily time frame right here, SPY has this unfilled gap, an unfilled gap all the way up to, uh, this is like the 455s. So we came super close to filling all the gaps, and we tend to have very tight resistance between 455 and the 457s. Okay, so we'll be watching that very carefully. This is the high we saw from July when the market got a rug pull. So we'll be watching to see if SPY could pump more. Now, even though SPY is pumping, let me just call out that on the four hour time frame, we're still developing a bearish divergence. Uh, we have a triple bearish divergence on the MACD and also a double on the RSI. It doesn't guarantee anything. Remember, guys, it depends on NVIDIA's earnings and such, but it just tells us that the market's in a risky place, okay? There's risk as the market's becoming more greedy, and we tend to see some tight resistance up here. If we're super bullish, you want to see this thing break 458 and push up to 460. If not, if we fail to do so, we could get a rug pull very close to this 455 to 457 area after NVIDIA's earnings or something like that. So for now, we, we look bullish. We might try to retest 455 tomorrow and push up higher, but we'll be watching to see what happens after NVIDIA's earnings. That's the best thing I can tell you. Be very patient, be very mindful nonetheless. And once again, I, I, let me just call out some levels before I talk about the QQQ. 455 is going to be resistance, 455.5, 456. 456.4, and then we have very tight levels in the 456s, which is where we got historical rejections, 457.5, and then 458. Lots of tight resistance up here, so you want to be very careful in these higher levels on SPY. For support, watch 453.5, 452, and then 451, not to mention 450. So we'll be watching this very carefully. We'll see how it goes. And then to add on to this, I want to talk about the QQQ. On the QQQ, okay, we're trying to push up higher. We're seeing NVIDIA dragging this thing up. We have this resistance very close to 391.25, uh, just about right there. If we break above this, 392 is going to be the next level. Then we have 392.5 and 393. For support, make sure you watch 390. If we lose that, watch it come down to 3, uh, 389 and 388. As of right now, it looks bullish. It looks like it's going to try to break out to 392 or get very close to the 392 area. It may not pump as hard as it did today going into tomorrow, but it may pump approaching the FOMC minutes. That could cause some volatility, uh, but the bigger move may be caused by NVIDIA's earnings. So we'll be watching that very carefully. As of right now, though, we look more bullish, and I do anticipate that the market's going to make an attempt to go higher. Now, we could we could cool off a bit in the morning, might come back down to 390, back to some of these supports, and then get a nice bounce and push up higher. Just watch your Fibonacci's just to be safe. Uh, the last one I'm going to go over is going to be Apple on TradingView. So for Apple, we're still looking bullish. We're still uptrending quite decently. If Apple breaks 192, watch 192.5. We have some tight resistance here, but Apple's in a very risky state because, because of the fact that it also keeps on seeing the RSI declining. It keeps on forming a bearish divergence. We have a quadruple bearish divergence on Apple. This never got invalidated. This whole time it's been pumping and pumping and pumping, but the technicals are telling us that this thing's in a 
once again, it's in a risky place. So what this means is Apple could go higher. We could keep going for 192.5, 193. It could go higher, but as long as this remains, as long as this is not getting validated, this suggests that there's going to be a rug pull coming to Apple. This is what the technicals are suggesting. As long as they don't get invalidated, there's going to be some kind of rug pull soon. Uh, it's getting closer and closer is what this is suggesting. I just don't, don't know the exact timing. Could take another week. Could take a couple more days. So just be careful. Apple is a little risky. NVIDIA is a bit risky too. But once again, depends on earnings. So I just wanted to warn you about that and then watch your levels very carefully. Uh, watch the resistance levels I just called out and support is going to be 191, 190.5, and then this other trend line right here close to like 190. So we'll be watching those. Now I'm going to just quickly, very, very quickly go over just a couple more. So far, it looks like it might make an attempt to bounce, build this imbalance and make its way up to 6.74. The IWM or the Russell 2000 looks like it may make an attempt to go a little higher. And then if we do end up seeing this in risk and shoulders play out, you're going to be watching that 180 resistance. So if we reject off of this, we could see this thing come back down. If it manages to break this, it's going to be fine. I think it's going to push a little more towards 180. And then we'll see what happens after the minutes are released. Uh, the Fed's policies will have a big effect on small caps, which is going to affect this. So be very careful when looking at the Russell. Uh, it could push a bit more, but watch that 180 resistance. For Microsoft, watch 380. If this thing sees resistance right here, we could see this thing push a little bit higher towards 382.5, if not 385, and then reject. Uh, or it could just you know, straight reject from here after the FOMC minutes. I think it's going to be testing 380 again, so push a little bit more to the upside. Then we're going to be watching resistance up there just to be safe. AMD may retest 122, but just be careful because after NVIDIA's earnings, it's going to make a big move. It might, it might get a rug pull back down to like 116 maybe even closer to 110, or it might push higher depending on NVIDIA. So you want to be very careful. The VIX is forming a bullish divergence still. It hasn't necessarily invalidated this. Uh, and I also want to add that we're at some very, very important support. The VIX tends to bounce historically. For the last you know few months, it's been bouncing around the 12 area. Uh, we're approaching 12.7 to 13. We're very close to that. So that tells us that there's going to be a risk of the VIX potentially bouncing. So if the VIX gets that bounce as it's entering some critical support, simultaneously SPY is entering some critical resistance. So is the S&P 500 and SPX and et cetera, which suggests that we might see this thing bounce and the market might be getting ready for a rejection. The dollar has a, let me just double check this, a bullish divergence the last time I checked it. This suggests that the dollar might make an attempt to bounce soon. And if that ends up being the case, uh, this could cause some big moves. My, my chart went all the way back, guys. I'm sorry about that. I have to go all the way forward. This may take me like a minute. But I, I'm saying this because the dollar, once I like catch up to real time, the dollar is still developing this bullish divergence. And once this plays out, if it does play out, this suggests that the market is going to likely get a rejection because SPY is at a very, very risky place. I think this just got messed up. I'm sorry about that, guys. I'm going to go back to the daily, see if I could get this back to normal. Uh, basically, in real time, the dollar is continuing to look very, very uh, weak, but it's at key support, so we'll see if this holds or not. Yeah, for some reason, this went all the way back to like 2014. I'll, I'll fix that later, but for now, that's what I'm seeing. On Coinbase, this is once again making an attempt to push up higher. We're going to be looking for a retest of 110. If we break uh, out more, which I think we're going to push more. Watch 110 to 114, and we might reject from there. That's where we have some tight resistance. It's going to push a bit higher, so watch for 110. For Google, it's looking quite decent. It might make an attempt to get up to about 138 to 140. It might try to fill this gap, so it could push a little bit more, but look for rejection. We're at some tight resistance, so you want to be very careful. It could pop a bit more, and then there's going to be a risk of a rejection as we're approaching some tight resistance. The 10-year Treasury yield is going to make a big move tomorrow depending on the Fed's policies. If the Fed hints at another hike or the fact that they may not cut rates for an extended period of time, this thing could bounce and drag the market down. So you want to be very careful to see if the 10-year bounces or not. So we'll be patient with that. For Amazon, uh, we're looking quite decent on the daily. Look for a retest of 147 to 148. And then we might see this thing come back down because of the fact that on the four-hour time frame, we have this... Uh, weakening trend that's developing. This looks like a slanted head and shoulders. If we do pop a bit more, we could get a rejection. So be very careful on Amazon. If we fill this imbalance, we could pop a little bit more, but you want to be watching resistance very carefully. Last but not least for Meta, we're going to be watching resistance at 340 to 342. If we break 342, we're going to turn bullish. We could push for 345. 
But if we fail here, we're going to get a rejection, come back down, come back down, excuse me, to 334. And if we fail there, then it's going to be 328. Now we have a bearish divergence on meta, which suggests that it might come down. Uh, it could be forming like a cup and handle as well. So it could get a small rejection and then bounce. But if it gets a bigger one, this could just be like uh, another signal for more downside. So we'll, we'll be very careful. I do anticipate a p potential rejection coming as we're at resistance, but just to be safe, we'll have to see what happens tomorrow. With that being said, guys, uh, for Tesla and all the different stocks out there, Tesla has a lot of bad news involving Elon Musk that's been coming out. Once again, uh, it is what it is. There's nothing we can really do about that for now. This does not have to do much with Tesla's fundamentals. And on top of this, I just want to call out that we have some big catalyst for tomorrow. So be very patient and wait and see what happens with all this news. I'll be back tomorrow morning to talk about it. Until then, thank you all so much for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks again, and peace out.